our chairman of the summit, the Honorable Jimmy Akena, President of UPC, the chairman of the National Resistance Movement, Your Excellency President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, and the president of the JEMA, my brother Asuman Basaliwa, our distinguished guests from here and abroad, our elders, our delegations from the political parties represented in IPOD, and senior government officials like the leader of government business in parliament, the right honorable prime minister, last but not least. Dear friends, President Museveni is the only member of the founding summit of IPOD who is still a member of the summit today. As DP, we lost our member of the summit, the Honorable Dr. John Seban Akizito, together with the founding council member, our late Secretary General. If you will indulge me, I would ask that we rise for a short moment of silence in honor of those founding leaders of IPOD. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Sometimes what others tell us depends on what we tell them. There's a story of a little boy who used to go to herd cattle and he would start shouting at the hills. Now you know hills have echoes. When the Honorable Kasule Lumumba confirmed that President Museveni had finally agreed to sit with us, I asked myself, if I were the president of the country and I had 80% of parliament, would I want to talk to an absolute minority? Sometimes I think like that. If I had the army which I firmly controlled and the police, and the, I was also very well respected in the region with a lot of experience and wielding a lot of influence, would I want to talk to people who have such few members of parliament? As I thought and reflected, I realized that actually we are not few. We may look small and few, but we represent a very powerful current in the population. And the president of Uganda, in his wisdom, has become aware <laughs> that these few people represent a very powerful current. Without going into details, I want to assure you delegates that we have not insulated the president from the electricity which is in the population. We have conducted it in its full voltage, and that formed the subject of the summit. I won't go into details. Democracy starts with dialogue, our friend from the Netherlands has said. But it doesn't end with dialogue, it requires action. It really doesn't matter what we say here. What matters is what we do. And that's how we want to be judged. We cannot be judged on what we promise. A check has a face value, but until it is cash, it is just a piece of paper. So can you take our words today to the bank and get anything? We have had some difficult times, and I believe these have necessitated that we talk to each other. We can't go on like this. We have even seen blood on the streets. I recall the walk to work. Police bullets and tear gas 
In one instance, when the commotion died down and when the smoke had floated away, one baby, Nanyonga, lay dead. Today, we have to resolve that we are a better country than this. We should be a country of law and order, but also a country of fair play and tolerance. This meeting, by the way, is a kind of paradox, but is a paradox that can save the future of our country. After taking the oath in 2016, the President of the Republic vowed that by 2021 there will be no opposition party left. Here we are talking about strengthening all political parties. That is why it is a paradox. On our part, as the opposition, we also threatened that we would evict him before the next elections. And here we are talking about peaceful transition. Dear friends, this process can lead to a national conversation. We can have a caucus of the whole country, actually. We have no more excuses not to talk to each other. I was looking for an excuse not to come. I failed. So I am here because we have no more excuses. We believe in a lot of excuses, as my brother Brian Kagoro said, that everybody blames everything on the president of the country. In the Bible, there's the story of that man who was lying by the pool at Bethesda. For years, he was crippled. According to the Bible, an angel came every afternoon, once in a while, and stirred up that pool. And if you were strong enough to jump in the pool at that moment, you would be healed of whatever ailment you have. But that man had been lying there. Somehow he could not get himself to the pool in time. So when Jesus passed by, he gave Jesus a litany of excuses. You know, I'm too weak. When the angel stirs the water, there's nobody to lift me and throw me in the water. I've been here for years. Jesus asked only one question. Do you want to get well? All their excuses are irrelevant. What do you want? I think it is important that Ugandans tell each other what they want. And we told each other what we want today. In simple terms, instead of giving excuses. Dear friends, our country has had a tragic history. But I have confidence in the future. I believe our country is blessed. I believe our country will be prosperous. I believe we can build on the ashes of whatever tragedies that we have. Sometimes we are not an isolated case. Dear friends, we believe that we should ask some difficult questions, whether we are still on track, whether we are living up to the lofty aspirations of the 95 Constitution, whether we are committed to the best answers as opposed to whose answer, but rather the best answer. I want to assure you on behalf of the Democratic Party that as long as we can agree on the path, we can work together as members of IPOD. For peace and justice, we can work together. For inclusion and equal opportunity, we can work together. For free and fair elections, we can work together. For national healing and the binding of all wounds in our body politic, we can work together. In the summit, we did three things. First, we inquired. We listened to each other with the intention of genuinely understanding where each one is coming from. We suspended judgment on each other. Secondly, we each advocated for our positions. I won't go into details. Because we, we have a duty to explain our points of view. That is why we have dialogue. And we did this without being aggressive or defensive. I was there. I can tell you there was no aggressiveness, there was no defensiveness. 
Lots of concessions have been made today. You will hear about them. We sought to understand each other without abandoning our very strongly held views. This summit is not just about showing a smooth surface to the world. What we are engaged in requires that we show respect, challenge each other's opinions, ask tough questions, and also take a stand. It does, it's, not, it's not true that we all agree on everything. All of us took a stand, individual stand. Where you have a team of rivals, each of us is a rival. We call ourselves opposition, but Gemma is my opponent when elections come. And UPC is also my opponent. So why do we need iPod? We need iPod because we need to sanitize our political processes so that we can compete. But above all, we are accepting that we may not be equal in size and power or even age. But we are equal in our commitment to give dialogue a chance. That is what has given us the strength to take the risks because we are at a historical junction. We are looking at the opportunities in iPod, not the problems. We believe that we can have meaningful and fruitful dialogue. This is a battle of ideas, not a battle of egos. Indeed, we have grievances. Of course, we have grievances, numerous grievances. We have amplified our disappointments over the many broken promises, the instances when we have moved further away from the path of constitutionalism and rule of law and respect for fundamental rights. But politics is not just about arguing with each other. By the way, we never talked about ourselves. We talked about the people of Uganda and we talked about Uganda. That's the beauty of it. Because while politicians argue, children and mothers continue to die in ill-equipped hospitals run by poorly paid health workers. While the politicians argue, rural farmers, the backbone of our economy, cannot access credit, fertilizers, machinery, and irrigation. They lose their harvest to the vagaries of poor harvest, post-harvest handling, and even exploitative middlemen who take advantage of the lack of cooperatives. Rural populations are abandoning the countryside and joining the army of the rural poor and unemployed. Those who are desperate resort to crime. Dialogue is not about talking only to those you like. Dialogue is about talking to those we dislike and disagree strongly with. Dialogue is painful. It hurts because you have to let go of bitterness pride and prejudice. I believe very strongly that sometimes we see each other as problems. But if you misdefine a problem, then the solution you propose will backfire. We live in strange times. We have fake news. We have those who bend the truth. We have fanatics, petty radicals, and those who don't want to see any other alternative viewpoint. Somebody defined a fanatic as somebody who approaches any question with an open mouth and a closed mind. iPod is about opening our mouths, but also opening our minds. Not opening our mouths and closing our minds. Today, we have started the process of diffusing tensions because we have found some points of agreement. A good starting point is the love for our people and our country. We need to find common ground, however small. We believe very strongly that if we ignore dialogue, then we will have cursed the future generations. It is our duty that we listen to each other with sincerity. I put can be a source of hope. I want to thank the media for all the controversy they created around the iPod summit. iPod now is the most Googled thing in Uganda. When you start Googling iPod summit, before you have finished the, the words, it will come automatically from Google. It means all Ugandans are asking, what is this thing called iPod summit? So you have done a good job. 
As I close, there are many cynics and skeptics out there, but we should, by our words and actions, send out a clear message that what we are engaged in is not just about leaders, politics, and politicians. It is about Uganda. It is about our country and putting it first. Our goal should be that Uganda should see for once what we have never seen before, peaceful transition. That for once we should have an army that lasts more than one regime. That we break the cycle of violent and unconstitutional changes of government. Mr. President, it would be wonderful if you attended the swearing in of a president that is not you. We all have to live up to the high expectations our people have of you and us. 26 January, it will be 33 years since the NRM assumed power. It is not for us in this room to judge the NRM or the president of Uganda. The judges are out there. Graduates who read of economic growth but can't find jobs. Local entrepreneurs who lose contracts to foreigners. Peasants who are losing their land to the rich, powerful, and well-connected. Farmers frustrated by the lack of support. Those are the judges. It is not me. We don't have that power to judge. But Mr. President, I for one know some good attributes about you. And I'll say them here in public. Because we have come here to demonstrate that we are willing to meet you in broad daylight because we can't beat you any other time. <laughs> I don't know where others meet you, but for us, this is our only, only chance to meet you. <laughs> I have a gift for the national chairman of the NRM, which I would also like to hand over to him on behalf of a party he once belonged to. Maybe this will go into his museum.